this is Prince of Somnia, and I'm running out of hard drive space because of Let's Play Xenoblade Chronicles 2! In the last episode, we infiltrated the abandoned factory and found out who exactly is running the operation here and basically made them run away, and now we're trying to follow them. For this part of the storyline, we. or storyline. This part of the dungeon, we won't have uh, Tora in our party, which means we'll be running around tankless for the next. Uh, 30 or so minutes, but that's fine because we don't actually need a tank for this area. Anyhow, right in here in the ether control tower, uh, I think we want to fight these guys. Hmm, it would have been ideal to kill the ratchet here, or the scout there, but we'll just take care of this guy because he ratchet. I never thought I'd hear myself saying that on camera. There we go. For killing this engineer, Tyrkin, uh, we get the ether control key, which we can use to operate this panel over here to raise these ether tanks. That right there, my friends, is what we call a bridge. Alright. So now that we have the bridge up, we can cross over and move on with this place. I gotta wonder how they're managing to store all this ether in tanks like these. If it's anything like Xenoblade 1, ether is like incredibly corrosive. But th then again, that's if it's like Xenoblade 1. For all I know, this could be a completely different kind of ether that just isn't... Well, whatever. Anywho, we want to jump down here and walk along the ground floor. Again, I'm gonna skip past just about every enemy I can find because I don't care enough to fight them. Um. Ah! Okay, I didn't mean to fall down there, but this is actually where we want to go. Okay. Well, yeah, if you had continued walking up where I was walking, you would realize that that gate is closed and we need to go up there in order to activate the gate again, but since I managed to somehow fall down earlier than I'd wanted to, we're just gonna have to deal with things this way. Anyhow, over here, You'll notice that there's a conveyor belt with a bunch of incinerators, and there's controls right over here that we can use to turn those incinerators off, which I recommend you do, unless you're looking to find crispy fried roast titan and rex and blade and whatnot. Anyhow, over here is where we need to go from the conveyor belt. And up here, past heat storage, keep going up, all the way, even further. Man, even further than this. And we'll get to a door that you can open on this side. Hooray! Now imagine for a second, viewers, that you didn't know that you could go this way. You'd probably find yourself spending slash wasting a lot of time wandering around this place, trying to figure out just exactly how you're supposed to go about getting up here. Luckily for me, I happened to find out how to do this the second time I played through the game, and it made my life immensely easier. There are just some things where having a guide or a let's play help you along in the game makes it so that you can actually play the video game instead of wanting to scream at it. Anyhow, there's a bunch of Tyrkin enemy in here that I don't care about. And in here, there's another engineer, or no, sorry, a security Tyrkin this time that we need to defeat in order to operate the gate controls. There we go. We got the hangar division key this time, so. Yeah. I'll just finish off the remainder enemies here, hopefully get the aggro pulled off of Nia, and then we'll be uh, good to go. Okay, well we can't actually reach the Carbis Scout down there because the gateway is locked and I'm not opening it, so let's see, yeah, there we go. Yeah, because of the way hitting enemies works in this game, you can literally just shoot me through the floor and uh, yeah, that wasn't very fair, but whatever. Anyhow, this gate will open the hangar door, which means we can actually move on with this place. If you want to head down through the normal human way, we can just open that door up there. Or we can do the video game player way and fling ourselves off the nearest cliff at our very own convenience. There we go. And we didn't break our legs this time. Anywho, uh, either that pit over there or this broken piece of floor over here is how you're supposed to get down to the... Uh, to the place underneath here. I just happened to fall down at the right wrong place. Hey, look 
and found. we're good to go. I got through this area a lot faster than I thought I would, so there we go. Where's Banner? Where did he go? What? 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 what what's all this shaking? Sometimes, I swear to God, I don't even understand what I'm looking at here. I know it's a reference to some sort of anime, but for the life of me, I just don't know what, slash I don't really want to know what. <laughs> anyway, Banner's just gonna stand there and kind of gloat at you for a little while, so you might as well just start opening up with some damage before he starts hitting you back. Okay, yeah, there he goes. Ow. So, Rosa here kind of doesn't have auto attacks. Uh -oh. Wow. That was bad luck. Well, assuming you don't have terrible luck like that. Jesus Christ. Never had this much bad luck, but he knocked us both down with that attack, and it was just all over for me. But anyway, like I was trying to say before I literally got my butt ripped off, Rosa kind of doesn't have uh, auto attacks. I mean, she kind of does, but she kind of doesn't. Mostly, they're either really just powerful but incredibly slow attacks, or they're straight up arts like Blam Blam Rocket here, which can top one. As much as possible, uh, try to position yourself um, on the opposite side of Rosa's Nia, so that what happened to me earlier doesn't completely destroy you like it destroyed me. Anyway. Uh, you can topple Rosa, as you saw earlier, so whenever you get the opportunity to do so, lay on that, uh, lay on that damage, and just try to make sure you stay healed, because you don't have a tank, and it can be quite difficult to keep up with your damage while also not, you know, getting torn apart or having an aggro move. It's too... strong for us. Allow me. I shall serve as a decoy. And then... No! Poppy will take care of that! Tora! Poppy! Poppy? This energy's incredible! Thanks to my sister, Lila! Master Pawn, profusest apologies for letting them control Lila like that. Lila show much more respect for Master Pawn than Poppy do. No need for apologies. You come back, and that enough for me. Sister, Lila did awful things. 
Poppy used to people doing awful things. Who Poppy mean by that? Poppy. Lila has one more request. We have many new sisters. Poppy will save them. It is my duty. Lila happy. Now, Lila has one thing left to do. Poppy? Use Lila as starter and... Uh, of course! Poppy's ether furnace! Using experimental ether furnace from Lila, it can be fully ignited! But then... Will Lila be alright doing thing like that? At least I can do. Use the flames of Lila's life to save them. Now, Poppy! Show them your real power! Roger that, Master Pond! Initiating QT mode! Engage! After all those chapters, we finally have a second blade for Tora, Poppy QT. By default, she's a fire elemental tank blade, with a unique weapon that only Tora can use that I believe has at least one, possibly even two driver combos that you can pull off with it, which is really nice. Now we finally have fire again, and we can pull off even more combos than we could before. By the way, in case you didn't notice you're just there, Poppy can switch at will. It's effectively a second blade for Tora. This looks really, really nice. Uh, yeah, Korra, can you help us out there? I'll go grab the health potions here. Awesome! And as soon as... There we go. Yeah, we can now use this combo. Blade combo, third stage. There we go, and now we can talk about it. Alright, what are you doing? It's been a while since I've had fire to run around here. Um, probably heal Nia. Ooh, yeah, one thing to watch out for, we kind of saw this combo. Uh, since, um... Blam Blam Rocket can knock you down or uh, it can topple you. Uh, he can also stop to launch you in the air and that'll do a lot of damage to you, so you really gotta watch out for that. It's about this time where the game is trying to tell you, hey, if you get hit with driver combos, you're gonna be in a world of hurt, so be careful. Um, don't think me is gonna get Dahlia fast enough. Also, don't rely on Mithra's level 4 special, of course, because you're indoors and you can't actually use it. Uh, we know this already. Make it. Ooh, you barely made it. Alright. 
Here we go. We're gonna use light, light, water, and light, 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 and keep a chain attack after that and finish him off. Oh man, that cancels. So good. Okay, once you get Rosa down to about half health, uh, it's gonna enra enrage itself and start dealing more damage than it was before. Which is bad because Rosa is all about that first damage. Alright, let's do this. We're gonna smother topple. Let's go! <laughs> Scatter shot. They just removed that from the game. Oh, wait. Nope, wrong game. Okay. I'm gonna build up to level 2 real quick. That's not how you build up to level 2 real quick. Yeah, no, we're, we're gonna get there. Man! But, like, that recovery charge is just so good. Even when it's not recovering the full, it's recovering enough to where I can just so quickly build up my specials again. We'll get light, light, light going real easy. Hmm, I don't like the mix of that. Oh, it did nothing. I can even kind of hear Banner in the background complaining about how that did absolutely nothing. Alright, this doesn't kill him outright. One chain attack should. Alright, alright, alright. Let's see, we've got ice. So we should use rock for this one to help burst it down a little bit. Yeah, don't worry about any attack that we might have started off. We've got iframes. My best bet is Dahlia to damage that water orb. <laughs> Wouldn't I like to have done that? I mean, we got the burst off anyway, so let's just use and start working on the water orb over there. Actually, hit the QTE this time. Thank you. Just let me handle it. Okay, good. We're gonna go on for another round. So, I can use Dahlia instead of Dromark because I don't need to worry about bursting the water this round. There we go. She hit the light one just like I wanted. Uh, Poppy QT. And there we go. One more, another round. Because overkill just isn't enough. Go for it. Okay, we're gonna use Korra and literally just heal up to full. <laughs> uh, wouldn't you like to have actually done damage? Ooh, man, if we had one more orb to break, that would have been a that would have been a full burst right there. But that's okay. We're doing literally twenty thousand damage per strike with this. So. Um, who do I think would do the most damage? Let's see if Dahlia can do the most damage. Not really. Well, actually, kind of. And Poppy QT, of course. And there you go. Justice always prevail! Master Pawn, that enough gloating now. Now, maybe you too won't be used for bad things anymore. Ugh! Banner's vanished again. Over there, my lady. Hold it! Anyhow, let's open up our affinity charts real quick, cause I just want to make sure we are topped up on that for a little bit. My yeah, when well, I was out questing, Dromark made it all the way up to key affinity level four, which is ridiculous. Time to 
Yeah. Let's just open these. This very no I don't think Poppy QT needs uh, a new thing. Courtship is the word I was looking for. Yeah, no, she should be good. She doesn't have as high block rate, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Before you move on, you want to make sure you're at least level 35 across the board, possibly higher, and you probably want to clench yourself. <clears throat> Before you move on, you want to make sure you're level 35 or higher, because we're going to be continuing on to the finale of Chapter 4 in the next episode of Let's Play Xenoblade Chronicles 2. See you guys then!